Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you for watching. Today on Station Rigs, we are back at Station 11 in Denver, Colorado. We're going to take a look at their technical rescue, Rescue One. We're going to talk to Patrick, and he's going to walk us through it. So let's go and take a look. Hey Pat, nice Hello. to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, thanks for joining or uh, inviting us down. Absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about your truck? Yeah, uh, this is our brand new apparatus actually. Uh, our unit designations are R29 for this one. Uh, we just put it in service, it's brand new to us. Um, it is a heavy rescue chassis from Pierce Manufacturing, brand new. Uh, it's about 70,000 pound GVW uh, okay. and it's loaded with all kinds of cool technical rescue equipment. That's what I hear. That's why we're here. You yeah. know, we, you have a lot of cool things. But this is not an engine. You don't carry hose or anything like that. No, no. So it is a pretty unique chassis. A lot of big city fire departments typically have these staffed heavy rescues. Uh, so it's not a ladder truck. It's not a fire engine or a pumper. It's just strictly filled with tools, equipment, and fancy suits that we have to get dressed in for each type of call. Awesome, awesome. Can we take a look on the inside real yeah, quick? Yeah, absolutely. Come I on. Want to open the door. So kind of walk us around what you got on the inside here. How does this operate? Uh, yeah, yeah. So typical kind of rescue chassis cab arrangement from Pierce Manufacturing. Um, the cool thing for us is the uh, generator and onboard hydraulics feature. Um, both are PTO, so we can run them independently, but the onboard hydraulics technically can run four TNT hydraulic tools all at the same time on an extrication. Yeah, so, yeah, that makes a big difference. Yeah. Uh, some fancy things for us, we now have a backup camera, which we're not used to. Uh, we have like the automatic climate control, you know, like your Lexus Mercedes. Yeah, you gotta keep it comfortable. Um, full complement of your typical emergency lights. Uh, this rig is really nice for us because compared to our two previous apparatus, uh, the, the lighting is really great. So um, really gets kind of people knowing that we're coming and going. Right. Uh, and it helps me as the driver, especially at night, to really kind of manage these neighborhoods, especially in this, the Baker neighborhood and kind of Via Franca. Um, these streets are really tight. And thanks to the lighting and this having a slightly shorter wheelbase and very good turning radius, it makes it easier for us to get closer to the scene. <laughs> All right, let's make our way around awesome. the cab and yeah. see what you got. Awesome. So real quick, as I'm thinking about it, do you have to have a CDL to drive something like this? Uh, typically, you might in some fire department applications. The Denver Fire Department does not require that of its drivers. Okay. We have an in-house kind of proprietary testing process, but we're all certified to what the city needs for its insurance designation. Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, we're going to skip this because I was doing some online awesome. research before we got there. Yeah, yeah. It, this is going to be a walkthrough and we'll catch it on the other side if that's okay, okay with you. Yeah, so yeah. we'll start with this first compartment. Okay, great. Uh, so this is my compartment. Um, pretty much just my PPE okay. uh, for a little bit of technical rescue and then firefighting. Okay. So we try to keep this compartment pretty clean and easily accessible for all of that gear just so I can get it on fast and catch up to the guys inside. Okay. Because uh, unlike a lot of other fire trucks, uh, the driver on this rig, even though we act as a truck company on fires, I don't get dressed until we get there okay. because typically we have a long ways to drive for our responses for fires. Right. So it's better that I just get on the apparatus and get us there very fast. Right, right. Um, the only other thing in this compartment really that matters to us is the light control. So we have one giant uh, light mass that okay. comes out of the apparatus on the roof, like right above this compartment. And it's huge in terms of lighting the scene, uh, specifically for vertical ventilation. Right, okay. Uh, super helpful for right, us. Right, right. So. Now, you know, when you talk about, talk about the typical engineer, mm -hmm. and you're the driver of the vehicle, yes, sir. Uh, you, you don't have a pump to worry about, so you actually get to go do work, too. I you do. don't have to stick with the truck the entire time. I do. But, you do stick with the truck or you get oh, to go sorry. to work? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I get to go to work. Okay. Uh, and again, on the rescue companies here in Denver, because there, there's two of us, uh, the driver position is again kind of unique okay. because then I'm not tied to necessarily my own equipment or another partner. Um, I get to do a lot of work kind of independently. That's awesome. So, so, yeah. So the entire city of Denver has only two rescues that run? Yes, sir. You guys and, are running your butts off. Yeah. There. About how we, many calls do you get a year? Uh, I believe we're at about 2,500, and okay. the other heavy rescue is just shy of about 60% of that. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah. 
right. Um, so this next compartment, obviously we have the two reels with the onboard hydraulics. So each of these is 150 foot long and it pushes that hydraulic fluid, the same pressure volume the whole time, but to these two pre-connected tools. Okay. So uh, we have the BFCs, which are just a large version of our cutters and shears. Okay. Um, so all the truck companies carry the regular shears. We carry the bigger batter tool. Okay. Um, you know, specifically for high tensile, strength steel, boron, things like that. Um, that maybe other truck companies are going to cut through slowly or be incapable of right, doing so. Right. Uh, and then we and have two telescoping rams that are longer than everybody else. They're 50 inches. So. Okay. So for the guys that don't know, the people that are viewing, this is your jaws of life that you, you would see. A, yeah. The, te technically the jaws of life are on the other side, but yes. Okay. Yeah, this, okay. Is, this is kind of that concept of us cutting you out of your car okay. if you're stuck in it. Okay. A um, lot of small other various tools. Uh, some are special again to us, the heavy rescue. Um, we have another set of these cutters or shears that are very small for confined spaces. Um, typically on vehicle extrication, we use them for steering wheels, brake pedals, shifters, things that you can't get the big tool into yeah. but might be impinging upon a patient. Okay. Um, and then the big blue. So this is a Steel Max uh, electric reverse running uh, circular saw specifically for cutting a roof in half, typically. Wow. Um, yeah. That would make the job easy. Yeah, you yeah. Know, right now, you know, where I come from, I use either a sawzall or, right. a, or a shears or something like right, that to right. get it across. Yeah. So. Which again, we have all those things, so do truck crews, but this is special to us. Right. Um, and then just some heavy rigging, like chains, some simple stabilization things, another hydraulic power plant as a backup and a line for it. So, okay. Yeah. What's the next cabinet? So these are just some various hand tools on the top. Um, the ones on top specifically are for trench. Okay. Um, most of them are kind of like a non-sparking tool, but for trench rescue, just for us to move dirt. Um, all of these are just your various simple access tools. A couple pipe wrenches, a pig, bolt cutters, pry bars. Yeah, bolt sledgehammers. Um, yeah, and then again, some lifting supplement, just quick, easy access bottle jacks. Okay. Um, Lots of speed pack cribbing, mostly for vehicle extrication and stabilization. Uh, our oxyacetylene torch. What would you use an oxyacetylene torch for? I, you know, when I think of yeah. that, I think of you know basically um, welding or you know right. in a, in kind of a manufacturing aspect. I've sure, never yeah. seen it actually on a truck. Sure. Um, so in a, some truck companies have torches. Um, both heavy rescues have torches. The guys down at Station One that do the collapse team, right? Um, so since we are versed in all of the technical rescue disciplines, we supplement that team. So on that type of call, in terms of your burning, breaching, breaking, we would be assisting either with the tools or our expertise to actually burn through metal. Okay. So if the part of a building collapses and we have to cut through rebar, a beam, something like that, that gives us the ability to do so. Awesome. awesome. So, and then we just have two big uh, hand tool boxes. Okay. Kind of a different assembly of tools for mostly designed to right. break things apart off of a person. Okay. Um, so a half inch drive, three eighths inch yes, drive. Yeah. It's very easy, yeah. Yeah. nicely labeled. Yeah. And they're, they're, yeah. They operate independently, so the the supplement of the equipment inside of them is all nearly identical. Okay. But it's just the big box, the little box. Yep. Yeah. So just some pneumatic tools. Perfect. Uh, so this compartment um, on the bottom is pretty much just some heavy rigging materials. Okay. Uh, we have a couple chain hoists, chain falls, a couple come alongs, uh, and then just the various assortment of like shackles, snatch blocks, things like that. Right. Uh, and then the top. Comes right out at you. Yeah. Okay. So these are the Paratech Hydrofusion struts. Uh, they're compatible with our Paratech Longshore Golds and our gray struts, like the extensions. Okay. Uh, pretty much our go-to just for lifting vertically with these, because we don't lift with any other Paratech for oh. the most part. Um, the Golds, the Longshores upstairs, we use for you know like shoring temporarily. Uh, maybe trench shoring temporarily kind of deal. And then the ones that we saw earlier are more for vehicle stabilization. Okay. These are for lifting. Okay. Um, do you lift with these or do you lift and then put these underneath them? No, no, the, you can chase with them like okay. you would a normal strut, but these we can actually lift. They okay. Have a, each one has a dedicated hydraulic pump. Okay. Just a hand pump. Okay, so this is basically a big <laughs> rabbit tool. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Great right. tool for us, especially for like if you have to lift a dump truck off of a passenger vehicle. Right, right. So yeah. <clears throat> so and these little compartments just fuel and yeah. fuels or so the torpedoes, there's one here that's a backup oxygen for the torch. Okay. Uh, this is my breathing air backup. Yep. Okay. And then this is just a tool bottle for our pneumatic tools. Okay. And then on either side we have 
just kind of an emergency um, rigging anchor for rope rescue. Okay. So. And you could put a uh, um, carabiner pulley. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, the top here. Just a hammer drill with some anchors, uh, lightweight for maybe rooftop anchor, anchors, rope rescue, okay. lifting and moving. Uh, drill bits if we need, a K-tool for forcible entry, and then these are our cruise packs. So okay. the Denver Fire Department carries 45 minute air bottles. Okay. These are one hour air bottles. Wow. So if we go into a high rise structure fire, uh, we'll take all four of these for our crew so that we can stay up there and not worry about crews having to bring air for rehab. To okay, us. okay. Are those Scots? Are they MSA? What are you? Scott. Scott. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, a couple of portable hydraulic tools. Okay. Um, I Which usually... is what I call the rabbit tool. Yep. And... Yep. 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 Um, so this is the two man in the bag. This is the one man that I would take on multifamily. Yep. Multifamily, excuse me. Yep. Um, this is my tool bag. Has mostly geared towards elevator rescue. Um, so it's got like elevator hoistway keys for the outside door. Um, various small hand tools for like hatchway removal, things okay. like that. Okay. And then we obviously write as the supplement for the rescue side of the high angle team. Um, we get called for like when an elevator is in either an expressway or a blind shaft. Okay. Because the only way to get to them is from a rope. Okay. So uh, this guy is pretty special to the heavy rescue companies. This is uh, basically a high rise rope. Uh, this is just so that I can lower one of our firefighters down over the edge of a building to like a balcony. Okay. If there's no other way interior to get to a victim. Right. Um, so that's, then, that's kind of what we saw on Chicago Fire yep. when they throw Kelly off the roof yep. and he hangs down. Yeah, yeah. That's what that bag yeah. is for. And there's a very famous couple of uh, rescues that were done with a similar rope bag in New York. Okay. Uh, kind of where this idea came from. And then we, the Glendale Fire Department, uh, before they were absorbed by Denver, had a very bad fire where this would have helped affect a rescue, so. Gotcha. Um, and then this is just my rope bag. Uh, so the guys, you know, a lot of their costumes and stuff are on the inside, the alley portion of the rig. This has just my rope harness and a little bit of equipment for rope okay. rescue. Now, are you doing full body harnesses or you just do yep. the lower? They're all a two piece class three harness. Okay. Yep. So you've got the, you know, chest attachment, dorsal, and then the waist with all the okay. doodads. And we like to keep it pretty simple. Okay. Um, every harness that they wear is the same. You know, it's got like shears, some webbing and prussics. And then each guy gets to carry like his own personal whatever he would like. So. Right, right. Um, these are pack hammers, so they're just a pneumatic braking tool. Okay. Um, more geared towards confined space, but we can okay. breach concrete, we can do that. It's like a jackhammer. Basically, but they're okay. very small. Okay. Looks, looks like a rifle. Okay. Um, some rigging straps, a uh, tarp that, we don't really use tarps on the Denver Fire Department for tools usually, but this is geared more towards our diving operation. Okay. So once we determine last seen point and best I, the officer and I on this rig determine where to start our dives from. We lay the tarp out so the guys have a nice, clean, concise area right. to operate on. Okay. Uh, and then we have onboard uh, power from the generator and uh, lower pressure for tools, just pneumatics. Okay. Um, is this an air compressor to fill your air bottles? It like is, it yeah. Is? Okay. So the, the compressor on the heavy rescues is for Air bottles, obviously, um, okay. especially us, because we typically go through quite a few bottles. We are kind of the lackeys on the fire scene, usually to do a lot of little things that we still need to be on air for. Um, and then it also helps keep the cascade on this rig full to supply all of our pneumatic tools. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So. so, and you guys call them air bottles, not air cylinders, because across the country, we've been hearing right. different names. So. Right, both really, but I'd say colloquially common for us is bottle. Bottle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this opposite side of the compressor is the cascade and the fill station. Okay. Uh, so like I was talking about, right, this is not just for breathing air for all of us, uh, mostly us on scene, but for other companies if need be. Okay. Um, but also just to run our pneumatic tools, fill our scuba cylinders. Okay. Um, so you would be considered what on the East Coast, the air light service. So, so you can fill air bottles right. and air cylinders right. and you have a cascade system for that. And we can, but we're not typically used for that because okay. the Denver Fire Department has a dedicated air light unit okay. uh, that's also the rehab team. Okay. So it's usually staffed by a light duty member. It is today, right. but they're strict. They have like 60 right. bottles that are full, a high powered compressor and cascade. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, you can function from that if you need to. Absolutely. Worst case scenario, yep. you got a gun. Yeah. 
And then this, this is just a portable air cart. Okay. Um, which is for our confined space entry. Okay. So if there's a compromised atmosphere below grade, uh, or at grade, but typically below grade, uh, this allows me to put the guys on a hard line of air. So they have supplied air to go in about 300 feet from oh. our point of entry. Okay. So about how deep do you have to go before you should be on air, give or take? Uh, it just depends on the atmosphere itself. Okay. Uh, so that's another portion of that scenario is we have another firehouse uh, by the Stockshell Complex, Station 9. They're the hazmat team. Okay. So we're hazmat technicians, but we're not the guys. Okay. Their responsibility on that type of call is the air monitoring to make sure that our guys are safe and so that I can make the decision whether or not they're going on air. Okay. So do you carry air sensors on the truck then though too? We do. Air yeah. monitors. Okay. Yep. But it, again, in, in that call, like a multi-resource technical assignment, it's their guys' job. Plus they have like repeaters, remote monitoring. Okay. That's that's their job, yeah. right? Just yeah. to make sure we don't pass out. Okay. So. Absolutely beautiful truck. There's Thank you. so much yeah. space in it. Yeah, yeah. You guys got it organized so well. Thank you. And we, we pride ourselves on keeping it clean and organized. Yeah. And, um, yeah. That way it's easy for us because there's so much equipment just to quickly get it. It always works. That's yep. the goal. Yeah. Um, these are some massive hoses. Where does that go to? Yeah. So uh, these three hoses and all these dead man switches basically are for these lifting bags. Okay. Um, you've probably seen them elsewhere in the fire service. Yeah. These are just the big pillowy marshmallow low pressure air bags. Yep. Um, some, some people on the Denver Fire Department don't typically like using them because there's a lot of complications with using them specifically with pillowing. Yeah. Um, but we, we are big ad advocates of these bags. Okay. Um, and have used them quite a bit. The right, last few years. right. We did a rescue out of uh, Alert Fire Company out of um, Downingtown area. Okay. They had a rescue bag that was big enough to lift the, the trains. They had a train yeah. yard that go through okay. there. That's so it's awesome. a great big yellow one that they, you know, would use to lift the trains yeah, if they yeah. needed to. So. And then these are just the, the typical thin square and rectangular Paratech high pressure bags. Right. Um, and again, we just have some, you know, surface and edge protection, uh, various hoses, all the dead mans and fittings and adapters that we would need. To what typically we use an airbag that like a smaller airbag like this? This isn't necessarily for vehicle rescue. This is more for collapse kind of stuff. Yeah. So the, the bigger ones for not necessarily vehicle extrication, uh, potentially, um, but more for if we need to lift, right? Yeah. Or spread away from something else, like a jersey barrier. Okay. Um, but yeah, these on that type of incident, we have used to, to quickly get, you know, off of someone's leg if they were partially ejected or okay. something like that. Right. Um, and then, yeah, we th this is mostly for the Paratech stuff, but there are a, a few different pneumatic adapters so that if we have a large scale incident, we can kind of work with other companies, other jurisdictions for making sure that all of our pneumatic tools are okay. working. So. Yeah. And then this one is kind of prepackaged for if we have a machinery accident or something. Okay. Uh, in addition to those toolboxes on the other side for removal and disassembly, yep. we have these for finite kind of confined space spreading. Yeah, yeah. So. They had to pull a fine young woman out of a tortilla rolling machine. Oh, wow. A couple of years ago. Okay. Um, this is more mostly the officer's compartment. Okay. Um, so this is his rope bank. Again, has just some PPE, a drill, and some anchors. Okay. Um, spare saw blades for our saw compartment. Yeah. Uh, our electric plug-in PPV fan for okay. positive power. pressure, yep. ventilation, yeah. Yep. And the DFD doesn't typically use positive pressure during an incident. It's yep. just for overhaul and cleanup. Yep. Um, yeah. Just a smoke ejector, basically. You got an extension ladder, though, too. Yeah, that's the officer's tool for uh, elevator rescues. Okay. Uh, he brings it, we use it. Uh, and then just a couple hand tools. Okay. So, I think it's unique that you actually have a compartment that an officer is almost responsible for. Absolutely. And then you have a compartment that you're responsible for. Yep. And then the other crew members, you carry four on this truck, right? You do. Other crew members, do they kind of get an assigned a, a compartment also? Uh, they don't. They more just have sides of the rig. Okay. You know, um, and that makes sense to us operationally. For example, um, on this fire truck, the, the senior man sits on this side and the junior man is on the other side. So if we get uh, our bread and butter house fire where we're unassigned walking up to the incident, uh, the senior guy will grab two chainsaws or depending on the house, you know, also a circular saw. Yep. And then the junior member will bring two hooks. Okay. Um, but yeah, it just depends on the call, but typically they have the sides of the rig and then the inside of the cabin the alley is their territory. Okay. So, so do you guys, uh, design this also to do RIT? Are you RIT support for fire services? Yeah, so since we, 
uh, act as a truck company typically on, as a resource on a fire scene. Uh, we have to carry the RIT equipment, uh, okay. the bag, the RIT pack, right, with the breathing air yeah. supply. Um, and we train extensively for that operation. So you have a fast border or Stokes or whatever? For uh, we have it, but again, like the way our mentality for the most part is not that scenario, uh, especially just because of the geography and the, the construction in Denver. RIT for us is more of an expedient operation okay. with, with much less material than you might have seen. Okay. Um, but we are versed in it, we have the equipment. Uh, awesome. We're not typically assigned RIT. Okay. Um, this is a is this a battery powered one? It is, yeah. So okay. this is just a hydraulic from TNT, uh, powered by two Milwaukee batteries. Um, so it is hydraulic, but battery powered hydraulic motor. Okay. Um, and then it's just a combi tool, so uh, cutter spreaders, both. Right. Um, we see a lot of fire departments that are getting away from the old, you know, Hearst right. tools that were just hydraulic with the portable tanks and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, and moving to this, whether it's Hearst or a different brand. Right. Um, they're finding that it's a. It, much quicker to get into service than it is to hook up the other stuff. Sure, um, and th there's pros and cons to all of that. I personally am more of a fan of the old school hydraulics for a lot of reasons, uh, but they have a time and a place. Yeah, so yeah, it's cool to see both of them on your on your rig. Yeah, so just the saw compartment, pretty yep. self-explanatory. Um, yeah, spare fuel for all of our gas-powered tools, including the saws, uh, electric bandsaw, the combi tool. Batteries, The this is typically my tool on a fire that I bring up. Okay. Just a small battery powered yeah. circular saw. It, mini K12? Uh, basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it is a phenomenal tool. Right, right. It's great. Um, and then just our gas powered rotaries. Okay. All right. And then this guy is just oh, the other side complement yeah. of the uh, hydraulic reels. Okay. So these are the jaws of life. Yeah. Uh, we call them the spreaders. Okay. Um, and then we have another uh, 50 inch yeah. telescoping ram pre-connected. Right, right. And the, the two rams have different uh, footprint attachments on them. Okay. So they, both of them we can use in most applications, but they do have kind of pros and cons as to which one we would right. use. I like the fact that you have the quick disconnects too. Yeah. Because many times when you're working with hydraulics, you got to shut the unit right, down, right. make sure it doesn't leak. Yep. You know, I've had actually incidents in the past where firefighters were sprayed with you know high pressure hydraulics because right. they didn't have those kind of things right. they go to disconnect and didn't uh, shut it down yep. so that's a great safety feature that your management definitely encourages yeah. you to have it, it's so. interesting it's yes it is safe and that's an excellent safety feature so far it's only the two heavy rescues that have it and okay. it's more just for speed okay um but yeah it's it's great we're getting used to it we've never had it before a couple months ago and okay kind of getting used to it so all right, all right. So that's pretty much the outside of the vehicle, yes, but sir. you have a huge walkthrough from what I understood and kind of when I, when I was doing my research. Mm -hmm. Are we able to make it the inside and take yeah, a look? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, come on in. Inside. Oh, it's huge too. Yeah. It's definitely a stand up back here. It is. You know, I'm, you know, five foot 11 and I got plenty of room. Right. And believe it or not, this is actually a smaller cab than we're used to. Okay. Um, so a little adjustment, but it is nice, brand new, you know. Um, but plenty of headroom for these guys to get dressed in their costume changes. Right. Because we could be at a structured fire just picking up and go to a swift water rescue. Okay. Um, okay. Typically how our summers go. Right. And you kind of talk about costume changes. You're talking about I got to get into my wetsuit or dry suit, mm -hmm. or I got to get back into structural firefighting gear, yep. or I got to get into those kind of things. Absolutely. This is a nice, safe place to do that. Yes. You know, all too often we see them, you know, put a tarp out and they're going to do it in the outside elements. Right. Well, it doesn't matter because you ha you don't have to worry about rain, heat, cold. Exactly. You got a controlled environment. And right here. we can do it while we're responding. Which oh, is you're right. A benefit. So. Uh, right, right. Yeah. And what you got a bunch of equipment up here too. So how we do explain to me what over there is yep. that the gas meters? I assume yes. in a tick? Yep. So we have a, a various combination of gas meters, uh, okay. depending on the type of call. Um, a various assortment of thermal imagers that guys like to pick and choose uh, for different reasons for uh, fire scenes. Yep. Um, a charging bank for our radios and radio batteries. Okay. Uh, I noticed with the motor rollers, they're the green ones. They're the Bluetooth available. Do yep. you guys use the Bluetooth uh, features? A few, a few guys are doing some research and development on Bluetooth devices for okay. them, uh, but they have not been issued officially by the department. Okay. So. Okay. Well, we did a, uh, a show. Um, we did a live burn and MSA sponsored. Okay. Obviously, Scott has their own versions, but yeah. um, we we really found a big difference using the Bluetooth technology mm -hmm. inside of a fire versus not. And, sure. You know, maybe you can watch it one day. Right. Yeah, take yeah. a look. Yeah. Help sure. you guys make a decision. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, yeah. Absolutely. Um, 
I also noticed the headsets. Mm -hmm. Is it pretty noisy back here? It's a newer vehicle, so they're yeah. quieter than what we used to use. Yeah. But it, you use the headsets we do. to communicate or more for ear protection? Both. Okay. Yeah, I'd say more for the communication because the cab is pretty tight and quiet okay. when we're responding. Um, but it, you know, every little bit helps preserve our hearing and safety over the years. Absolutely. I so, got a 2% loss of 29 exactly, years. So. Exactly. <laughs> so. All right, and then we're gonna make our way down the alleyway? What do Alley. You, alleyway, yes, all right. Sir. Yeah. Show me what you got back here. Awesome. Yeah, so this is the alleyway. Uh, like I said, a lot of costumes and still a lot of tools and equipment. Okay. Um, on this side, these are just our, each crew every day has a personal gear bag. Yeah. So that could just be a spare change of clothes, a personal set of swift water gloves, extra fire gloves, just that assortment of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, these are the dive gear bags. Okay. Uh, so all of the bags, ropes, uh, in these alleyway compartments are organized one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, so guys kind of determine at the beginning of each shift, like, hey, I'm gonna go out of bag one. Okay. And they're typically for the gear are organized by size. So smallest to largest. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of all of the extra equipment that you need for a dive call, other than the suit itself. Okay. Uh, and then a couple sets of turtle fins for the divers. Um, uh, this top shelf is all EMS equipment. Okay. Uh, just a medical bag oxygen, some sparrows, and then like a lockout kit, things like that. Now, are all you guys certified as first responders? Are you EMTs? Are you paramedics? Yep. Uh, all of us on the Denver Fire Department, Denver Fire Department, excuse me, are EMT basics. Okay. So we typically act in a first responder role and then Denver Health Hospital, uh, the paramedic division, they assume all the, for the most part, BLS and ALS. Okay. The one time that we assume BLS as an EMT within that scope, is like someone that's super sick right when we get there, a cardiac call or trauma. So then they need that extra set of hands yeah, and yep. you're gonna just continue to go with them. Yeah. So, so. That, yeah, that's an awesome partnership between two different services. It works pretty well. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then this bottom shelf is just some patient packaging. Okay. Uh, we have a Skedco Sked in the back and then the Yates spec pack up. Yep, yep. So uh, below us in the alley, these are all those confined space lines I was talking about earlier. Okay. Uh, How long is that? But you, by, yep. do you connect them all together? We do. Yeah. So okay. each spool is a hundred feet, and technically OSHA constraints, we can only and the AHJ, which is us, we can only go three hundred feet from a point of entry. Okay. For confined space. Okay. But yeah. So each spool is a hundred feet, and it's air and communication. Okay. So that's why there's three. That's your three hundred feet max. You got your partner. Yes. Sir. They got three hundred feet. Yep. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. Um, so this, speaking of which, is the confined space kind of area. Okay. So these first two cases are just the con space masks, the okay. Saba, skate packs, whatever you want to call them. So they're a 15 minute Scott uh, shoulder harness okay. with the quick connects to get uh, hardline supply in through the bottom of okay. it and communications. Right. And then just some victim uh, air supply stuff. So like mask, uh, RIT essentially connection so that we can supply them air off of the line if we need to okay uh, and then the communication standpoint so that's my job on the outside is just manning the air and the communication okay so the communications do you have cameras available that you can telescope cameras in uh, we do not but the guys at station one on the collapse team okay. they, the big collapse trailer has some tools that they can bore a hole and put the camera into to, to see where their victims at okay so do you then carry any kind of drones or anything like that we do not but uh, there is a drone with the, uh, we call him the super chief, the shift commander okay. in his vehicle. Uh, but the, the big drone operators on our job are the line shop. So we have sworn personnel that are not line firefighters. Their only job is to work on like electronics, radios, things like that, okay. the whole department. They run the aerial support team. So they have like a sprinter van with a landing pad, a huge drone. That's awesome. It's impressive. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and they can do IR flights. They can do geo mapping. Like, right. Um, and then just, some rope, uh, the winch for our tripod. Okay. Some lockout tag out equipment. Okay. Um, and then we have a special microphone that we can lower down into like a chimney if someone gets stuck, which right. has happened. Yeah. Um, it's not Santa Claus for all those kids that are watching. Santa <laughs> yeah. Claus did not get stuck. Oh, if no. he does, yep. he, Pat will be able to get him out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, these are the BCDs for diving, the buoyancy compensation devices. Yeah. Um, so backplate dedicated scuba with. Uh, um, Pony bottle, we call it, the okay. small backup air. Uh, and then the comm lines and the communications. Again, that's my job. Again, so you have two sets of gear. So mm -hmm. those are pretty much the back seat guys that are gonna be kind of doing the work. Yes. And then you guys are the support guys or are all you guys certified? So if one goes down, right. 
you can jump in if you need be. Mm -hmm. Is that the so, way you run it? Yep. So we, we are all certified to the same training, right? And we all have to be able to fill those holes. Okay. Uh, however, it is the two technicians on the back step of this rig that will be doing the rescue work. Okay. Typically. Uh, every day, 8 a.m., uh, all of the tech rescue companies in the Denver Fire Department get on a conference call and they make sure that all those holes are filled. And then like today, there's a few rigs that have only three technicians instead of four. Uh, some of us can kind of supplement some of those roles. So that okay. there are days where like I might have to dive on a call. Okay. Um, Okay. Yeah, that's nice to know that you also have, you have that cross training. Yeah, uh, so you help each other out. You know each other's job, right. even though specifically you're here to drive. Right. He's here to do that, but you can do it all. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Even like in diving, especially, it's so uh, physiologically sensitive. Yeah. If one of the guys on the back step has a, an ear infection or a headache that day, or was yeah, is feeling sick. Right. Uh, we might switch roles for the day okay. on that call. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right, you um, got this is boogie the, boards? Yeah, a lot more water rescue stuff. So we <laughs> okay. have uh, ice rescue rope and buckets, uh, the save a dive quit, just extra equipment for our BCDs basically. The line gun, okay. uh, which is great for shooting a line across the river. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one of those in the museum, we went to Reading Fire Museum and mm -hmm. they had a line gun that yeah. they created and it was an old, I think an M4 rifle oh, really? that they converted into a line <laughs> That's gun. Cool. Yeah. Ours just uses 22 long rifles. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, it's fun. Uh, victim PFDs, boogie boards, and throw ropes, basically. Okay. So you guys don't necessarily have a boat. You don't have a John boat or anything like that, uh, do you? We do not. We have a uh, big yellow called the banana boat. Okay. Um, so does the other heavy rescue. And then at Station One, on the uh, water rescue, the, the big blue yeah. fire truck that's similar to this chassis, uh, they have two kind of John boats. So okay. they, they have two... Um, Inflatable dual pontoon like Zodiacs. The Zodiacs, okay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. gas powered and electric, okay. sonar, all of that. Okay. So your so. banana boat for us would be more of a ice rescue kind of banana boat kind of thing. Correct. Right? We okay. we can rig it for swift water also. Okay. Um, but I'd say typically it's it's for a platform platform for ice rescue. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, up here is just the uh, Arizona vortex. So just a artificial high directional for rope rescue. Okay. Uh, just like a big tripod that we can use to get rope up and over an edge. Okay. Um, to go with that, we have the Harkin winch. So Harkin uh, and CMC kind of took some sailing technology and moved it into the rope rescue world. So it's a, a dedicated winch tool that uses our rescue rope. Um, so that we can use we can use it, however, but typically guys like to train on rigging it to the tripod. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, do you uh, personally do any kind of rock climbing? And uh... <laughs> I do not. A lot of guys do, okay. uh, but I don't. Okay. <laughs> so it's funny, even diving. Like a lot of our guys dive recreationally. Yeah, I don't. Okay. So I'm afraid of sharks. Okay. <laughs> no big deal. Um, You're in Colorado. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the 300 foot rit rope. And then the RIT pack. Okay. Uh, this is a 200 foot rope assisted search rope just for search purposes. Right. Uh, so, rescue or. So, the RIT rope, is that typical that you don't know, have a knot every 50 feet or, and then you can find your way back out of the building? Basically. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, and then this is just a trench box. So, okay. this is small bottles and some pneumatic stuff to set uh, struts for shoring. Okay. Um, yep. yep. Um, on the side of this alley, uh, we've got our eight foot uh, hooks. Back there are the six foot hooks, and okay. then like a long easy for entry into cars, a dog catcher. Yeah. And yeah. then these are pro poles for uh, water rescue. Okay. Okay. So, All right. So, do you guys then help participate in the overhaul using the hooks and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. again, we are, you know, on a fire scene, we're used typically as a truck company resource. An overhaul is a truck company scope. Gotcha. So, yep. okay. Um, some collapse tools, uh, just some tool aprons, hammers, uh, a warm drive wood saw, some lighting. Uh, we have a big Bosch breaker. Okay. Um, and then some kind of finite cutting. We have a Dremel, and then we have a, a series of plugs, right. like for gas leaks or whatever. Yeah. So Dremel tool comes in handy uh, when the little kid gets their head stuck in the banisters. Yep. yep. <laughs> so yeah. you don't want to bring out this big saw. Yeah. You bring out the little Dremel, and yep. then they can get their head out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, we had to cut a. Uh, Seat belt, the male end of a seat belt off a girl's finger a few months ago. Oh, okay. Because she was playing with it in the car and yeah. got it stuck, and then it stuck. swelled up, and you oh, couldn't get yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
then the hospital called us. We don't know what to do. All right, well. Yeah. Um, so again, one, two, three, four. Okay. So these are our rope rescue bags. Okay. Uh, each one has 300 foot of static Kern Mantle half inch rope uh, and the accompanying hardware and software. But they're also, so these two, one and three mirror each other, two and four mirror each other. And these are main lines and these are belay. Okay. So that's typically how we run as a two line on everything. All right. Now, obviously in Colorado and Denver, mm -hmm. you got the Rocky Mountains right here. Mm -hmm. Do you go assist into the Rocky Mountains to no. do some of this stuff? So you just do the city itself? Yes, sir. So you're talking rural rescues on a lot of the high rises mm -hmm. or stuff like that? Yep. Uh, not necessarily mountain rescue. No. So we can if they call for the additional resources or help. Okay. But very, very rare. Uh, th there's a couple of uh, rope teams on that kind of urban interface that are very good at what they do. They have lighter rope, very different equipment. Ours is mostly just for urban. Okay. You know. Yeah. Uh, bridges. Oh rises. yeah, bridges. You got a lot of bridges coming into yep. here too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. This is so cool. Yeah. Um, and then these are the rope gear bags. So again, one through four, uh, small to large, just has rope harnesses, gloves, coveralls, things like that. Right. Um, and then the PPE for water calls. So all of the diving dry suits, all of the swift water dry suits, and then some extra weights. Okay. Do you guys necessarily use all dry suits across the board, or do you still have wetsuits? Or there, there are some crews that have wetsuits. Uh, we do not use okay. wetsuits any longer because every water call that we're going on, we're treating as a hazmat. Okay. Because typically there's uh, fluids from vehicles, bodily fluids, uh, and our the water in the city is very filthy. Yeah. So th this is safer for us. Yeah. Use the dry suit. It makes sense. It, yep. And it's just as easy to get into and yep. out of yep. as a wetsuit. Yep. Probably a little easier than wetsuits. Yeah. I put a couple on and you're like, it can be, yeah. <laughs> it can be hard. Yep. The only problem is that it offers no thermal, less, much, much less thermal protection. Okay. So guys get cold. Okay. Well, Pat, thank you so much for bringing us around. Absolutely. Before we end, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, so, well, I'm, how long have you been with the fire department? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm in my 11th year. Okay. Uh, I promoted to the position of engineer pretty early on, uh, knowing that I wanted to get here to rescue one eventually. And cards kind of played themselves just in my right direction. Are so. you a first generation firefighter? Or? I am. Okay. But, yeah, my, my uncle was a Denver police officer and he kind of steered me in the right direction. Okay. So. <laughs> well, thank you for your service. Thank you very you much. You got a lot of knowledge. I, you sure. know, hopefully uh, the viewers that uh, watch the show, you know, can learn from you. And, and you know, if they're in the area and they want to see, stop by, yeah, talk to do. Pat and uh, take a look at your truck. Awesome. Thank you. Once again, this is Heroes Next Door. We just did a station rigs with Rescue One out of Denver, Colorado. Take a look at it. Do us a favor before you end here, hit subscribe, hit notification. We're trying to get to that 100,000 subscriber mark. With your help, we can do that. We'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.